Viva La Stool, Sack Tap. Uh, I'm a huge Barstool fan. I, I don't. They've expanded, and some of their content's gotten a little, a little watered down for my taste. I realize they're trying to appeal to women, and, and that they're like a, you know, they're a big company now, so they can't get away with some of the shit that they, they used to. But the old reputation that they have, and again, they still have some great stuff. Like fucking Jim Florentine's got a podcast with them. That guy's, that guy's fucking hilarious. Uh, Kirk Minahan's very funny. They got a whole veterans thing going. Uh, Prez is one of the funniest motherfuckers on the play. Pre his his cockiness and arrogance and the way he just loves, like he spent 20 years building this thing and he is just waving his dick in everybody's face who tries to like shame him over his behavior and sense of humor. I absolutely fucking love it. And that is actually what uh we're going to be getting into uh at this very moment because i don't know you know if you guys are active on twitter or not but there was a little spat on twitter between barstool and the wokenistas as we like to call them around here uh, led this time by a gentleman named gord miller and i guess this is a name that if you're a hockey fan means something i think he's a uh, He's on like TSN or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's he's he's a hockey guy. And someone asked him on Twitter if he would be appearing on the Barstool hockey podcast Spitting Chicklets. Again, I'm not a huge NHL guy. I mean, hockey's a very cool sport. It's just you know, you only have time for so much and after I graduated high school, they put the fucking Devils on the Outdoor Life Network. They made it impossible. They made it difficult to watch hockey. And then it it just faded from you know my my fucking view. So apropos of of absolutely nothing, uh, here's this tweet that he sends out. He says, "My comment today about not wanting to associate with barstool sports has prompted a lot of text, emails, and calls. The response has been incredibly positive, especially from female BIPOC. Uh, BIPOC is." Um, I believe it's black, indigenous, people of color, colleagues who have been afraid to speak out about their issues with Barstool and sites like it. Um, first of all, nobody, nobody has ever been afraid to speak out against the likes of Barstool Sports. It is literally, if you are a, a journalist and you want to, especially a sports journalist, and you want to score huge points with blue checkmark Twitter, all you have to do is, you know, write a, a quick little post bashing Barstool and grab, you know, whatever, whatever their latest joke that you can take out of context is, slap that in there, spread it around Twitter, and you will absolutely get your kudos from the, the Wokenista crowd. Uh, I just have, and to show you how frequently it happens, because it's about, I would say on about a quarterly basis for the past few years, some, you know, Again, either it's I almost feel like it's kind of like the mafia where um, to uh, to get in. They're always like you, you got to whack somebody to get into the mafia. Like they're not going to let you in unless they know one, you got a little blood on your hands. So it makes it harder for you to fucking snitch. And two, that if they're letting you into the mafia, they would like to know that you are capable of doing the, the stuff required of being. Uh, a, a top performing mob guy, which might mean, uh, you know, putting uh, putting some fellas in cement shoes, as it were. Uh, and so it seems like to me that to kind of earn your uh, your Wokenista, woke left sports journalist uh, bona fides, the easiest way that people see to do that is to write something shitting on either Portnoy or Barstool Sports. Uh, so some of these uh, these headlines, Barstool Sports founder unapologetic about using racist language in comedy videos inside Barstool Sports culture of online hate. Barstool Sports easily spreads, promotes problematic ideologies. Ooh. Barstool employee quits over Dave Portnoy's racism. Uh, what else do we have? Barstool Sports and the persistence of traditional masculinity. Right. Like it's a bad thing, right? The persistence of of traditional masculinity. <clears throat> I fucking love how they pose that as an automatic bad thing. Let me tell you something. We're fucking this country is fucking hemorrhaging masculinity. 
sorry, I was uh, a little cheebed up before. My my throat's a tad dry as a result, so I don't want to keep coughing into the microphone. Um, this country is growing a bigger fucking set of tits and a deeper vagina by the day. We could use all of the traditional or toxic or whatever fucking masculinity we want to call it. Our fucking nuts are shrinking, literally. Like American uh, male testosterone levels are are dipping as our sperm counts. We are becoming fucking pussies. Uh, what else? What's the next headline? I got Barstool Sports and Dave Portnoy double down on racism. Mm-hmm. I see. And these are headlines. These aren't from like, you know, some guy's medium page or what was that? Uh, oh, what was that one uh, that they used to use? Was it Tumblr? Might've been Tumblr where they would blog. And there were also a lot of people sharing a lot of nude pics on there. I used to go there. I used to go there for, uh, for amateur nudes, but um, yeah, these are from the, the daily news, the daily beast variety, New York mag. Uh, these are not, you know, when you're, when hit pieces in some of the most widely uh, circulated online platforms on the entire internet are, are going after you, these aren't exactly hushed whispers behind a, a locked door with the, the lights out and the curtains drawn, okay? These are regular full frontal attacks by mainstream media platforms. So this idea that anyone is afraid to go after barstool is complete bullshit it is they are in, they intentionally frame it like that because these people thrive on perceived victimhood uh as we will see with uh gord i want to reiterate reiterate this gentleman's name in case you want gord miller it is a hockey name i'll give him that um the last name is not a great hockey name like it should be like Messier or Kovalchuk or Brodor or something like that, but it's a good Gord is a good hockey name. Unfortunately, this guy seems like a pussy. If I if I don't know anything about this and I'm not a hockey historian, if I had to guess, old Gord here hasn't hasn't laced up the skates since like elementary school, maybe. Uh, probably probably wasn't knocking a lot of teeth out uh, during during brawls on the ice. He writes, My problem with Barstool is the history of unapologetic misogyny, racism, xenophobia, and the repeated condoning of non-consensual sex. By the way, he, he there's a very soft way of, of accusing Barstool of condoning rape. Uh, if not wanting to associate with that makes me a part of cancel culture or constitutes virtue signaling or being woke, I'm okay with that. Uh, uh, and this is this is where he really, really, if you if you didn't think he was a douchebag yet, this is where he really spills just his cup runneth over with douche. As a public service, here are some alternative definitions of those terms, which are often used slash misused in the public sphere. And he goes on to educate us about the terms cancel culture, virtue signaling, and woke. Very nice of him. Cancel culture. Holding individuals and groups responsible for what they say and do. Which, no, it isn't at all. This is the bullshit thing that if someone says that there's cancel culture or that someone was unfairly um, canceled, that people always fire back. It's about accountability. It's not. That is just a very convenient way for them to say, well, look, if you don't agree with the way we're all piling on and trying to destroy this re this person's reputation, then you don't believe in people being held accountable for the awful things that they said. What they usually leave out is uh, the context of of the comment, often uh, a, a joke, uh, you know, a comment that made a, a joke or a comedy sketch or a, a joking tweet. Um, if you go out of your way to destroy someone for that uh, or, or get them kicked off of their TV show or deplatformed or whatever, then you are, that is cancel culture. It's not accountability. When, uh, when I've, people are going to hear this, they're going to they're be bored to tears. They'll be look, you fucking asshole. We've heard you say this a million times. Well, there are people who don't seem to uh, grasp this concept that uh, a small minority of people targeting a, a media platform 
threatening their advertisers and demanding that someone be fired, which, and this is, it's just, it's happened so many fucking, so many times. The, the first, the most famous one was uh, Justine Sacco, right? She made that tweet. She was, uh, she was the chick that was flying to Africa a few years back and she tweeted like flying to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS, LOL, or whatever the fuck, um, you know, and a fucking, it was a clear, a clear goof. Like I'm sure she wasn't going over there. Like, all right, Africa, better make sure I don't have any unprotected sex because you could definitely catch AIDS pretty easily in Africa. Um, <clears throat> it's a very long flight from the U S to Africa and people caught the tweet and they, uh, sh they said they kept retweeting it at her employer and the hashtag has Justine landed yet was uh, was going going viral, right? This was really one of the uh, first major cancellations. Um, accountability is like Bill Cosby and Weinstein and you know Cuomo, if he really was rubbing his penis up on uh, women and looking down their shirts, as they say, that's being held accountable. Destroying someone over a comment or a joke, and now it's become en uh, quite en vogue. Uh, to do so, uh, they will uh, they'll go back to when you were a teenager because now people in the working world have had Twitter, you know, Twitter since like 2010 or whatever. Uh, they'll go back and pull up your your tweets from then. That was you know what 11 years ago. So if you're 26, 11 years ago was when you were 15. You shot off a fucking uh, a crass tweet when you were 15. You're going to be held accountable for it as a 26 year old doesn't make much sense to me and they don't put a lot of thought into this because these people are you know it's a very this is a very surface level thing right this is very superficial they're just grasping at whatever they can get a piece of they're not putting it into its proper context because these people are are unhinged uh the next one virtue signaling using one's public platform no matter how large or small to set an example for others and following through on that example in one's own life. Again, no, it's not. It's uh, virtue signaling is the, hey guys, look at me. They, everyone wants, when any, whenever anyone sends a fucking tweet out or makes a, a statement online, what they want is the one of us, one of us reaction um, from the right people and more and more because they saw if they now Twitter just boots your fucking account. If, if you have the wrong opinion and you know, every social media, I can't get a fucking, I can't promote a fucking video on Facebook because I say bad words. Um, but no, it's th like this guy Gord here. Uh, it's great that a hockey announcer is such a fucking pussy by the way that he's wearing a mask in his twitter pic like i was looking for an example i could think of of virtue signaling and there may be no better one than wearing a covid mask in your social media profile picture that's it that is the virtue signal it's amazing like it's just it's staring us right in the face he is explaining to us what he thinks virtue signaling is while not realizing that he himself is quite guilty of virtue signaling by wearing his stupid mask in his stupid, dumb fucking Twitter picture. Uh, what's the next one? Woke. Recognizing that there has been and still is inequality and injustice around us and making a commitment to point it out and affect real change. Yes. I his this guy's fucking Mr. Sincere act is infuriating. Like I want to I want to bash this guy over the fucking head with a hockey stick. I hope I hope the next game he's doing someone cracks a fucking puck up into the broadcast booth and it catches him right between the fucking eyes so he can't tweet any of this inane drivel anymore. What a fucking jerk off. Um but again, this guy is trying to wage a Twitter war against a comedy blog, right? And this is what everyone does when they when they go after Barstool. 
they treat Barstool like they're fucking CNN or the New York Times or, or the fucking Associated Press. Like it's a platform that people should be getting serious content from. It's not. It is It is outwardly. It is by its own uh, definition a smut blog. They, they're one of their bread and butter pieces of content is, is smoke shows where it's just literally pictures of hot chicks. They have porn stars coming on talking about squirting and doing fucking stepmother scenes. Uh, it is, you know, they share viral videos of guys fucking getting hammered at during Santa con and jumping across the subway tracks. You're not supposed to be going to the stool for, you know, legitimate guidance uh, on, on how to, you know, view a, a social issue or run your lives. They're joking about things. Like everything that has ever been held against, like one of them, the uh, the condoning rape, which is the, the big one they go after Prez for. He made a joke. Uh, a, a judge had, there had been something used in court about uh, a rape victim wearing size 12 skinny jeans and prez made the comment i guess in a blog or something well if you wear scott size 12 skinny jeans then i guess you deserve to get raped and he was being very tongue-in-cheek he was not in fact saying that if you are a little bit on the chubby side and decide to wear skinny jeans that because of that choice in clothing you deserve to be uh violated uh, by with someone's penis it fascinates me. I mean, it would fascinate me if their if their stupid fucking motives weren't so weren't so clear. Okay, like it, it just would. Like if I thought that they were actually dumb enough to think that Prez was condoning rape, I'd be bewildered. But then you're just like, okay, so you're just lazy. You're looking for something to lash out at, and this is easy, right? This is much easier than traveling to a third world country to help fight female circumcision. Maybe that should be it. Maybe all of the, the woke jerk offs on the internet who are worried about, you know, what kind of weight room they have for the women's NCAA tournament that nobody's going to fucking watch. I, that was the big one on the news today. There's not a good enough weight room for the uh, the women's teams playing in the, the NCAA uh, women's basketball tournament. Nobody gives a fuck about the women's tournament because it sucks. I barely give a shit about the men's tournament. But if you, if I had a couple hours to kill on, on Saturday, I might tune in for a game. There's no fucking chance I'm watching women's college basketball. They're terrible. I, I could, I haven't shot a fucking basketball since, I don't know, when Boardwalk wasn't open last summer. Maybe the fucking summer before playing some Boardwalk, uh, you know, prize hoops, putting them up. Um... No, oh, you know, you know what? I think the the last time, yeah, I went on the Silkies hike in um, 2019 uh, with the veterans. We stopped at a fire uh, fire station in uh, Manhattan. The firefighters had a uh, basketball hoop up, and we were all passing the ball around. And I I chucked the rock up and uh, swish, nothing but net. So yeah, I could probably play in the fucking women's NCAA tournament and and dominate. I mean, if nothing else, as a a 35, soon to be 36 year old male, I'm reasonably certain that. I could compete with, or pr actually probably outcompete most of those broads in most categories. Um, and again, this these are Division One athletes we're talking about here. Um, but in any case, uh, there is no like, people uh, pe people like this. I got off track there with uh, shitting on women's basketball because it's a, it, women's basketball is so terrible that it distracted me from the point that I was trying to make. And uh, the point is, these people pick the easiest, they pick the biggest softball they can find, and they they just wage a war about it like they're leading the fucking abolitionist movement. Like, every one of these assholes thinks that they're, uh, they're fucking Frederick Douglass, fucking Gord Douglass over here. Um, and he finished uh, his next, well, he doesn't finish, he says a lot more, but his next one, and so no, I won't stick to sports or stay in my lane sports is a part of my life but not all of it and the road i'm on has many many lanes yeah i hope i hope you fucking run head on into a speeding semi and uh disintegrate into a a cloud of uh brains bones and blood fucking pain in the ass 
this guy reminds me of this pussy that I grew up with who used to uh, he used to post pictures from the women's march. He went to the, the the women's march in fucking Washington and he wore like a, a a pussy cat hat. You ever see a guy seriously wearing one of those like not as a goof? Like I went as a male feminist for Halloween a couple years ago and I got one. I got the it's the hat is sitting around here uh somewhere. But yeah, this is what this kind of uh this is what this kind of behavior is. I mean, this is this is he is the the out loud version of a fucking simp. Like, you know, when the, um, you can look at the sun and if the internet is the sun and it's just a big ball of fucking simps, uh, trying to do things to appease liberal women. Um, what we have here when something like this goes viral is like when there's a solar flare and just a big ball of fire, booms out of the fucking sun and we see it on a telescope and we're reminded that oh yeah the sun isn't just a yellow thing in the sky it's a big motherfucking ball of fire um so yes yeah, so you have guys like this who are they just spend all their these simps if you're not familiar with the term these are guys who spend all of their time on the internet um sort of placating any woke uh topic they love the misogyny is a big one because these guys are they're such pussy they never get they never get laid of their own volition. Again, these are the um, the Mumford and Sons listening uh you know dorm room date rapists, right? When the when the chick is vomiting in a garbage can and crying because uh Chad from the lacrosse team fucked her best friend, you know, 2 days after uh you 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 gave him a blowjob guys like gourd here are the ones who swoop in and while they're holding they're holding your hair back with one hand but they're slipping their fingers under your skirt trying to you know finger your dry drunk crying pussy with the other like these guys are the real fucking uh pieces of shit maybe he's maybe he's hoping maybe he's fishing for a pegging maybe he's hoping that a powerful liberal woman with a a bush that goes up to her belly button and uh, armpits hairier than mine will pop into his his DMs with a poop covered strap on affixed to her waist, uh, saying that uh, this could be you, but you tweeting, and uh, maybe they'll they'll get together for a, a nice a nice hot pegging sesh. That seems like what he might want. I can't say for sure. I would never say that that's a certain a certainty, but I can I can certainly say that this kind of behavior would lead me to believe that if you were doing that, if you're a guy like that, you probably do want to get a, a strap on thrust up your, your butthole by a woman from Brooklyn or Austin or San Francisco or uh, Portland, or Seattle, wherever, wherever pegging is popular. Uh, he continues. If at stool presidente wants to point out where I lied about incidences of misogyny, racism, xenophobia, and condoning non-consensual sex. He, he won't say rape. He will not say condoning rape. And it blows my mind. Like, this is like when they call uh, the homeless are not homeless anymore. They're undomiciled. Uh, they were, for a while, it was unhoused. But I guess unhoused, they figured, was too obviously close to homeless. So they went with undomiciled, which, by the way, still you are without a home you are homeless um non-consent con non-consensual sex is rape i don't know why he won't just say rape but he won't but uh condoning non-consensual sex at barstool i'll be happy to retract what i said however i did do my research and there is plenty of evidence to back me up in each case um uh, Sure. I mean, yeah, again, look, if you cherry pick pieces of content from the shitloads and shitloads that they have been putting out every day for over a decade now, yes, you can find things that Barstool uh, content people have done or said that could be put into the most absurd of lights. I mean, KFC, 
was going to to war with blind people and I think the entire nation of Honduras. So, you know, what's the, is Barstool an anti-Honduras website? Like, is that where we're going to glean from it now? Or was it a bit? Was it a goof? Um, they have a female CEO. They have uh, they have a gay blocker. They have women all over their, their sports content. They have a female veteran who's giving birth right now. I mean, they have uh, they have everything. They used to, I did Barstool Idol. One of the guys I was up against who actually got a job there was fucking Mantis. He was all whatever the fuck he was. Mm, fucking, he was, you know, Stephen Hawking or whatever the fuck. Um, they do it. And someone could take that out of context. Say, oh, he's ableist. Um, no, that's not, you know, we're, we're doing it. We're, this is entertainment here. We play it fast and loose with language. We fuck around. We you throw things around and you talk about uncomfortable topics in a casual manner because it disarms those topics and it gets a, a more honest uh, sort of response out of people. And you can work through the, the tricky and sticky parts if you throw in uh, a little bit of humor. But yeah. So when you have a site that does that, you can certainly find things and you can dig and you can slice the, the comedic context away like you're doing surgery on a woke tumor uh, if you want to make your premise wor uh, work. And in fact, this guy did none of that, by the way. He just tweeted that he didn't want to work with them and called them these things without even providing reference to the fact that they are allegedly racist or condoning whatever his stupid fucking saying for, for rape is. Uh, he did not provide reference to the already often cited incidences that have been named before by others. So this guy is lazy as fuck. He just wanted the points without even doing the work. He didn't even write an article. He just did a fucking uh, a tweet spree. And Prez invited him to debate, and he said no. Like, he was like, well, if you can tell me where I'm wrong, then I'll retract my statement. Okay, debate me. Well, I'm not going to do that ridiculous. Uh, my favorite statement of his, one thing that is indisputable is that Stuhl Presidente promotes aggressive online reprisals against those who disagree with him, as he did last night to at Vindog56, which led to responses like this one, which was reported to Twitter by people who monitor my account. Yeah, he keeps claiming that he doesn't check his at mentions, which is bullshit. He says he has people who monitor his account. He has no one who monitors. He monitors his account. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, aggressive online reprisals. Do I need to go through, once again, the fucking laundry list of media outlets that have done hit pieces on Barstool Sports? HBO, another one that attempted to. HBO, Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, tried to do it. Uh big fucking platform. Um, you know, if bar, if you go after Barstool and Prez has this guy, Vin Dog, that he has said, he puts comedic memes out. I, that's, it's like a joke. It's a fucking goof that when someone goes after Barstool, they respond with ridiculous childish memes. Um, you know, that and maybe some Barstool follower, you know, at brofist69, calling you a fag in your mentions, you know, that is not, th there's no weaponization there, right? That's not an aggressive online reprisal. When the people who have the influence that the Daily News or fucking Gawker or Deadspin or whoever, when they go after someone, as they often go after bar Barstool, I would call, I would call that an aggressive online reprisal, right? It sounds like he's afraid of getting a taste of his own medicine. It sounds like he got a droplet of his own medicine and realized that he had kicked a hornet's nest and, uh, and just completely lost his mind because he was tweeting about them all fucking day. He's nuts. And like paragraph, multi-paragraph threads. If you're doing that on the internet, you're a fucking whack job. Um, yeah. Simp behavior at its finest. I don't know. Anyway, in conclusion, this guy is a huge fucking pussy. Uh, moving, moving on. What do we have next? 